I would like to go ahead and take this opportunity to introduce you to a few other terms uh, that are related to the shape of the Earth uh, that we'll be building on uh, in future lectures. Well, the Earth is not a perfect sphere. So the Earth is not perfectly spherical uh, with a circumference of 40,075 kilometers. That would actually make a lot of things easier if the Earth were perfectly spherical, but it's not. There is, of course, topographic variation. We do have mountains and valleys and hills, uh, but actually they don't, when you're talking about in comparison to the rest of the diameter of the Earth, uh, even the tallest mountains uh, don't really give us a whole lot of variation. And so actually, if you're going on, we talk about three-dimensional representation, we actually often have to exaggerate uh, the, topogra the topography of different areas in order to get them to show up. So yes, there is topographic variation, but when you're talking about the entire Earth, uh, it's not very much taller uh, or valleys are not much lower uh, than the surface of the Earth. Uh, even on this particular globe, I've got uh, different raised areas representing mountain ranges uh, that I can feel and so your globes may have this as well. But even this topographic variation, that in order for me to be able to feel it, to feel the uh, Alps here, that's exaggerated on this globe. So as far as the topography goes, when you're talking about the shape and size of the entire Earth, we don't have to worry about that too much. One of the things that we do have to worry about, however, is the fact that the Earth is squashed. The Earth is actually a little bit shorter in the pole to pole direction than it is if you took the diameter across the equator. It's squashed in this direction. This is enough to make certain things when you're doing uh, geographic information systems much more difficult than if you were just working with a perfect sphere. This actually gives us what's called a semi-major and a semi-minor axis. You know, if the Earth were perfectly spherical, we would just talk about a diameter and a radius, and that would be constant in all directions. But because the Earth isn't uh, perfectly spherical, we have a semi-major axis that goes from the equator to the other side, the equator over here, and then a semi-minor axis, which is shorter, which goes from the North Pole down to the South Pole. So what do you call a shape that is a sphere that you took and you squashed a little bit? Well, if you take a sphere and you squash it, you end up with an ellipsoid. So that's the terminology that we use. So we say that if we're trying to construct a model of the Earth, uh, many times when you're talking about very precise measurements, you're not going to base it off of a sphere. You're going to base those measurements off of a little bit of a squashed sphere called a ellipsoid. Sometimes they call them a spheroid because it is so close to a sphere, it's almost a sphere. Uh, so sometimes you hear the term spheroid as well. But both spheroid and ellipsoid just means you've taken a sphere and then you've squashed it a little bit. And now you have a little bit better representation about the shape of the Earth. I want to give you one other term. It is also true that not only is the Earth squashed, it's also lumpy. These are technical terms. The Earth is squashed and also lumpy. So the Earth does, aside from the topography of the Earth, have little bulges, uh, little places that are a bit more recessed, little lumps across the surface of the Earth. Sometimes it's very important to account for those lumps across the surface of the Earth. When you do that, you generate something called a geoid. So a geoid accounts for the lumpiness of the Earth as well as the squashedness of the Earth. So a sphere is a representation of the Earth at one level of generalization. If we want to get a little bit better than that, then we squash the sphere a little bit and we get to an ellipsoid. And then if we want to make an even better representation of the Earth, then we go and take into account its lumpiness and so we produce a geoid. So go ahead and get familiar with that terminology now. We'll be using that later on, especially if you go in to really study projections and coordinate systems. All right, so now we know some very important information. We know that the Earth is round. Uh, we were able to prove that. We demonstrated how Eratosthenes proved that. We also know uh, what size the Earth is.
and we also have a little bit of the terminology necessary to describe the shape of the Earth in more detail than just saying a sphere or saying round. We have uh, ellipsoid and geoid, and these are all important terminology and very important foundational information uh, for us to continue with. Now that we know the size and shape of the Earth, the next thing we have to do is be able to determine position on the planet, and so that will be our next topic.